Hey everyone, welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Gottfried Hofmann and this tutorial for the Animation Notes add-on in Blender is all about Wiggle. Here in the demo video you see a lot of animation, a lot of movement. It's all been created using Wiggle. So even the lines in the background are wiggling and here I have an example of the wiggle node. It will move this cube along the x-axis and if I play back the animation you can see the effect and I also plotted the movement with this line here in the background. So the movement is basically random but not completely random. It's more like random points in time and an interpolation between them. And that's the big difference between wiggle and for example a really random movement, a real random movement like here. Now the movement is exactly random so at every frame another random position on the x-axis and that's of course usually not what you might want. More common is the usage of this wiggle effect. That's just a random movement but with an interpolation between the points. So it looks very natural, very organic and it's like it's like swinging back and forth, really nice movement. And the name wiggle we have here in the animation notes is actually the term used in After Effects. There is the function that's called wiggle. In different software it usually has a different name like for example noise maybe. And it's all the same algorithm. It's the so-called Perlin noise algorithm. And we have this Perlin noise algorithm in various places in Blender as well. For example, on the noise modifier for F curves, but also for textures. In cycles, it's the noise texture. In Blender internal, it's the clouds texture. So here I have an example for Blender internal. Here you see the texture. And here you should see the texture as well. clouds. And if I go into the third dimension you see that I added a displace modifier and all the displace modifier is doing is it's moving parts that are brighter upwards and parts that are less bright downwards. And here you see this like a landscape like effect. The pearly noise is used really widely because it looks very natural. And if we reduce the dimensions Then you'll see that we get like this nice line here, which basically shows that this pearly noise is also really useful for animation, of course. And in Blender, we have it as a modifier for animation. I have this cube here. And now let me add a single keyframe on the X location and go to the F curve editor, add a modifier noise. And let's increase this scale a little bit. And now if I play back the animation, it's moving similar to this other cube. So let's compare things now that we know that it's the same algorithm here. Here in the noise modifier, we for example have the option scale. And what it's changing is the speed of the animation. In the noise modifier, if you increase the scale, it's moving slower. Up here in animation notes we have a speed option and if we increase the speed it's actually moving faster. Then we have strength. That's the same as the amplitude here. So higher amplitude means it's moving on a longer distance. Just like we have it here with a higher amplitude. And we also have an option here phase that will basically change the curve the same up here would be seat. It would also change the movement, so a different seat, different movement. And then we have the option offset here, which is moving it in time actually, the curve. And up here, up here it would be evolution. And this is actually also the only option we have here in animation nodes to animate this. To create a real animation, for this I'm using the time info frame. And then if I play the animation back, I have this nice weekly movement here. So the last option we have here is death 
And that is the same as octaves in the wiggle node for animation nodes. But a depth of zero is the same as an octaves of one here. So if I set octaves to zero, it won't move. And if I set it to one, it will move similar to this here. Now, what happens if I increase the octaves well, or the depth here, this will add additional movement, but it will be finer. And the idea is that each octave means that a second wiggle is added on top, but with twice the frequency, so twice the speed. And that's why it's called octaves here, because if you have a guitar string, guitar string, and cut it in half, it will swing with twice the frequency. So now we know why it's called octave. And we have just one thing left that we need to find out about, and that is persistence down here. And well, this could actually be an option here. Persistence means how strongly additional octaves will be added to the animation. If I set it to 0 0.25, it's exactly the same as here. And then it, this will mean for every octave, so for every additional frequency, it will be added with a strength of a quarter of the one before. And that's why the additional frequencies just uh, make the curve more detailed, but we still have like this basic big curve. The cool thing about animation nodes is that we can actually change the persistence. So let's take a look at a persistence of 0 0.25. We see here that we have this extra detail here, but the basic movement is still the same. It's just like um, a little more, like a little more randomness added to it. Now, if I set the persistence to zero, all this extra detail is gone and we have exactly the same movement as if we would set the octaves to one. So let me just do this and increase the persistence. And then you'll see that Nothing is changing. And now let me set persistence to one and octaves to say four. And now we have a really extreme movement because each additional frequency is added with exactly the same influence. And now it's more or less looking as if this was a seismograph. So this persistence will allow you to control the extra detail, how strong it is in your effect. And this is all about the different options we have for the animation nodes wiggle node. But now let me show you that there is not just a number wiggle, but other wiggle nodes as well. Like for example, vector, vector wiggle here. And what this is doing is I could use the frame here for the evolution. Let's set the speed to three. And let's not make the amplitude not this big, so let's say one. And then let me uh, add Y and Z also to the location options here for the animation. And now this is wiggling in three dimensions along the X, Y and Z direction. Pretty cool. And this one is not needed anymore. To get the same thing from for this cube here, we would need three modifiers on three F curves. So insert single keyframe and here also I. And now I would need to duplicate this modifier. We can do this easily by copying it and then Y location, pasting it and changing the face. And then C location, pasting it again and again, changing the face. And you already see that this is kind of cumbersome. And for example, if I want to change the scale, I need to change it for all three of them. And up here, I can simply change the speed and I get a different speed for all three dimensions. And there's more to it. We even have a Euler wiggle for rotation. So let me add this as well. Here, rotation. Connect it here. And once again, frame here into evolution. And let's increase the speed as well. And now this is also rotating in a weekly fashion. And we could also add this for scale as well. And now we have rotation, scale and position animated using a wiggle with just two nodes. 
really, really cool. And another really cool thing about this is, is that I can animate each and every of one of these properties by hitting I or by the more animation nodes like way of putting something here into the socket, while here I cannot animate those things at all. So neither hitting, adding a keyframe nor using a driver. So the wiggle in animation nodes is a lot more powerful than the noise modifier for F curves. And I'd advise you to subscribe to this channel or to the Blender Diplom newsletter or check out the homepage every now and then because we will be adding a few other tutorials on the wiggle effect that will show you real world examples what you can do with it. So I hope you're having fun with these tutorials. I hope you learned quite a lot. And of course, always do try this at home.